Last night, the U.S. and U.K. struck 36 uh, Houthi targets in Yemen. This is an attempt to disrupt and degrade the capabilities uh, the militants have used to attack ships in the Red Sea. Joining us to discuss the strikes, what comes next is retired U.S. Navy Admiral and former NATO Supreme Allied Commander James Stavridis. And uh, all this has happened, uh, Admiral, since the last time you were on, and we were trying to, to decide what the right uh, amount of force should be used back then. Do you think that this has been uh, how, how you would have recommended it to the Biden administration and, and to our allies? Has it been about right? Is it effective? I think it's been about right, and it's too soon to tell if it's effective. So about right in the sense that we've increased the strike levels uh, quite significantly. Over the last uh, five days or so, we've hit probably 150 targets, 100 up in Iraq and Syria, about 50 down off the coast of the Red Sea. So increase in volume, number two, and important, the strikes have hit not only the proxy groups, but also Iranian Revolutionary Guard that are on site doing the training, equipping, and organizing. So I think it's about the right level at this stage. Whether it's effective or not, um, we don't know yet whether it's going to be effective in the minds of the mullahs in Tehran, who will ultimately make the decision to kind of reduce their commitment. But we do know, Joe, that it's effective in terms of degrading, destroying capability, taking out missiles, radar, C2, and all that. So mixed picture so far, uh, and let's see what happens next in terms of response from Tehran. Would we have to have uh, definitive proof that Iran was involved mm -hmm. uh, through proxies that uh, it, it resulted in the death of, of Americans to actually strike within Iran, Admiral, is, is that a possibility? I mean, th there are things in Iran that, that I'm sure are held dear by the mullahs that, that, that you just talked about. I mean, it, at some point, if they're willing to kill our, our people, that should be Something that, that should that never be on the table because that's a red that's a line that just can't be crossed that it's just stated oh no 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 that would accelerate two things too, too much I mean Iran doesn't seem to give a crap about crossing lines uh, without question it's on the table and uh, I can assure you U S Central Command has very detailed plans and you're right there are some. Uh, extremely juicy targets inside Iran. Uh, initially, you'd probably go after Iranian warships. You'd go after their oil and gas platforms at sea. You'd go internally after their munitions, uh, construction facilities. Don't forget, they're supplying drones to Ukraine. There is a very rich set of targets inside Iran. We have the capability to go after those. Um, I know for a fact those targets have been developed, processed. They're available for the president. And in terms of do we have definitive proof of Iranian complicity in these strikes, uh, from everything I can see, the answer to that is yes. The only reason we have not begun those strikes into Iran is to kind of give the Iranians one more exit before the tunnel, if you will, and avoid a truly widening war. I think that's smart. But if the mullahs continue to push their proxies, you're going to have to go into Iran. Because you know what? At this point, it, it just looks like the Iranians expected what we're doing now and that it really hasn't necessarily gotten their attention to the point of, of where it's necessary. And I understand what you're saying. Give them one more chance. They've had a lot of chances. You think it's inevitable? Uh, I don't think it's inevitable because at the very highest level, the mullahs know if they don't cease and desist, we will go into Iran and that will unlock a serious conflict that could end up destroying a significant part of their military capability. Uh, you and I are old enough to remember, particularly me, 
the late 1980s, we went through this almost exact process. The Iranians sought to close the Strait of Hormuz itself. U.S. Navy destroyed about a fourth of their fleet. They don't want a repetition of that. I hope we don't get there, but if we have to, we should go there. I think we remember the same things. I just looked at your age, so it's yeah, you <laughs> definitely don't remember. You may have less hair, but we, we remember the same things, uh, uh, Admiral, um, year for year, <laughs> I think. Maybe you got one, uh, maybe it's a couple of months. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, what, 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 what makes me think that at, at this point, that, that the Iranians uh, would, would really only, only understand one thing, and I, I think our left flank in this country would have a heart attack if we went in, if, if we did anything like that. I don't know if the president can do that in his own party, but that's, that's probably at this point. Do, do you have to be a wild eyed neocon uh, with, with blood in your mind to do that, or, or do you just finally say, look, Enough is enough. They, 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 we just can't keep playing this, this, this dance. I think the latter. And uh, frankly, my sense is the administration wants to avoid a wider war in the Middle East, of course, during an election year, of course. On the other hand, uh, if there are continued attacks that threaten our warships, for example, what if one of those cruise missiles got through and hit an American destroyer? You could have 30, 50, 100 sailors killed. Um, I can foresee uh, scenarios, Joe, where there is, in fact, a requirement to respond directly against Iran. I think in that scenario, we would do it. Let's hope the mullahs cease and desist. It really is last exit before the tunnel for them.